Um, so without further ado, uh, I'll turn it over to Ashley. And um, thank you for your time, Ashley. Oh, my, my pleasure. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining tonight. Thank you, Adam, for this great opportunity. Um, it's a pleasure to connect with um, more AMBUX chapters and, and chapter representatives. Um, <clears throat> so I, I really appreciate this time. Um, uh, my name is Ashley Hendershot, and I'm with the TechSoup Customer Success Team. Um, for those of you, you know, just in case there might be some vision impairment, um, I, my pronouns are she, her, and I'm a female with green eyes and highlighted hair, and I'm 5'6 with a plus size body type. Um, as I mentioned earlier, some of you may have heard of TechSoup before, but for some of you, this might be the first time. Um, but I'm really excited to share some resources with you tonight for the nonprofit sector. And um, for those of you who may um, not only be with AMBUX or maybe you represent other nonprofits, we definitely appreciate you spreading the good word of TechSoup far and wide. Um, I'm going to be holding a Q&A session at the end of the presentation. So if you wanna hold your questions until the end, that's totally fine. Or if you're worried you're gonna forget them, please feel free to drop them in the chat and we'll go ahead and address them at the end of the presentation. Um, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and jump into my slides. Okay. Um, so the TechSoup origin story began about 30 years ago. Um, our founder, Daniel Ben Horn, was working for a technology magazine and receiving more software samples than he could use himself in a lifetime. But he had a lot of friends in the nonprofit sector, so he began asking them if they could benefit from these sampled disks. So he was literally driving around through San Francisco in his truck and delivering these disks by hand. Um, he realized that this might be a great opportunity for nonprofits, and because nonprofits need access to technology but can't always afford it. Um, so he began this great mission and thus CompuMentor was born. Um, his objective was to create a program in which those with technology skills or mentors could volunteer to assist nonprofit organizations with information and technology support. And he began soliciting donations of other technological products, largely from other tech magazines that had large stock of unneeded software sent to them by uh, companies seeking coverage of their products and selling them back to nonprofits for a nominal fee, usually of about $5 per disc. And in 2008, CompuMentor became TechSoup. Right. Um, so TechSoup's approach, as we mentioned, um, we're a nonprofit, just like Ambux, and we support nonprofits. And we understand how important it is for nonprofits to have access to technology resources at the lowest cost possible. Our goal is to save nonprofits time and money so that they can put their savings back into the communities that they serve. And we have created courses, webinars, forums, and all sorts of um, solutions to support nonprofits so that they can connect with their peers and get themselves acquainted with technology to best suit their mission. So currently, TechSoup's donation program only serves 501c3 nonprofits, but we hope to be able to expand that eligibility in the future. Our impact. TechSoup knew that connecting nonprofits with discounted technology was important, but that the need was greater still. We serve not only US-based nonprofits, but also nonprofits across the globe. We've partnered with NGOs around the world to get nonprofits in some of the most impoverished areas of the world access to information and technology to expand the support that they're able to offer in their communities. With donation programs now in 236 countries and counting, we are proud of the way that we're able to support nonprofits in the global sector and expand their access to technology resources and solutions. In the past 30 years, TechSoup has built a relationship with over 80 donor partners who offer their solutions to the nonprofit sector at discounted rates. Some of these licenses are perpetual and some of them are subscription-based, but we're always adding new solutions to our online marketplace to support the nonprofit sector. Our legacy is to provide 
um, technological solutions to cover a range of technology categories such as accounting, security, donor management, hardware, graphic design, fundraising, cloud computing, and much, much more. Each of our donor partners who offers their solutions in the TechSoup marketplace gets to set the limitations of their solutions, whether that be by quantity, budget size of a nonprofit, the calendar year, or the fiscal year. And now I'm gonna go ahead and start delving into some of our most popular products in the TechSoup marketplace. Adobe offers software that can really boost your creativity. You can use Adobe products to edit images, design websites, publish newsletters, create videos and audio productions, and much, much more. Through the TechSoup donation program, Adobe provides nonprofits with, a, with either desktop licenses or discounted cloud subscriptions to, greatly, uh, to great products like Adobe Acrobat Pro DC and the Adobe Creative Cloud All Apps Plan, which includes applications such as Photoshop, Illustrator, Dreamweaver, InDesign, and Adobe After Effects for creating and editing film and video. Unfortunately, the Adobe discounts available through TechSoup can't be applied to existing Adobe subscriptions. But after you compare the commercial rates to the discounts available through TechSoup, starting with hypothetically the Adobe Creative Cloud All Apps plan, you would pay TechSoup a $5 admin fee and then $30 is paid monthly to Adobe for that subscription. Whereas the commercial version of Adobe Creative All Apps plan is $59.99 a month to Adobe. And that would be a 790, uh, excuse me, that would be $719 per year. But with the discounted TechSoup subscription, you would save $359, which makes switching to the TechSoup discount, uh, you know, a no brainer. Okay, then um, if we jump into QuickBooks for accounting services, um, into its popular QuickBooks accounting software helps nonprofits manage finances, file form 990s, file their taxes. Um, commercial QuickBooks subscriptions are renewed monthly, but TechSoup subscriptions are renewed yearly, saving nonprofits tremendously on this very popular bookkeeping software. TechSoup offers QuickBooks Online and um, QuickBooks for the desktop. But at this time, uh, the desktop version of QuickBooks is only eligible to nonprofits who have previously requested it from TechSoup before. And this is because the current desktop version that's being offered will no longer be supported in May of 2024. So we're encouraging nonprofits to switch to QuickBooks Online Plus or QuickBooks Online Advanced. Features such as payroll can be added to a QuickBooks subscription for an additional fee that is paid directly to Intuit through your subscription. If you're currently using a commercial version of QuickBooks and would like to switch to the TechSoup license, you would need to export your data from your current account, cancel your existing subscription, and create a new TechSoup subscription with a different email address. And then you would export your data back into the new account. And while I know that this sounds like a ton of hoops to jump through for, um, for uh, to switch your migration to migrate your data, trust me that the savings will make it well worth the hassle, because a commercial QuickBooks license requires monthly payments to Quick uh, to Intuit for ninety dollars, whereas a QuickBooks Online subscription through TechSoup is seventy five dollars per year, paid just once, which is an exceptional nonprofit savings of $1,005. Um, so again, the savings, they speak for themselves. TechSoup's also created a migration solution, which is $345 to assist you in migrating your data into a TechSoup subscription if this is a choice you decide to make for your Ambux chapter. But this will also give you the peace of mind in knowing that your data has been transferred by an expert in the field. Next, TechSoup offers DocuSign, which is an e-signature and transaction management software to simplify signing, sending, and managing digital documents on the internet. This has also been a very popular product uh, through the pandemic. Uh, DocuSign forms are electronic, oh, excuse me, um, are electronic no. signatures legal? The short answer is yes. On a meeting. 
<laughs> um, electronic signatures are legal, but the real question is whether an e-signature can create a binding and e enforceable contract. And again, the short answer is yes. Electronic signatures are widely recognized and accepted through the industrialized world, and they are more secure than traditional paper-based signatures, and thus less, less accessible su to forgery. In 2000, the US federal government passed the Electronic Signature in Global and National Commerce Act, which in tandem with the Un uh, Uniform Electronic Transaction Act confirms that electronic signatures constitutionally legally bind documents for all parties who choose to sign digitally. TechSoup currently offers three DocuSign versions, but eligibility for each level of the DocuSign will depend on the annual operating budget size of your chapter. Each version of DocuSign is available through TechSoup has an admin fee of $89, but the Business Pro version and the Advanced Solution version will require a secondary payment made to DocuSign to set up the subscription-based product version. All right, next we're gonna to switch to Wix. Wix offers online development platform, which allows you to create websites that support online payments and basic e-commerce functionality. TechSoup offers a 70% discount on either the core plan or the business or business elite plan, and each will feature web hosting and storage, where you can connect your domain, um, you can replace your free Wix URL, such as a username, with a custom domain from Wix or another internet domain register. And all premium plans include a voucher that provides a free custom domain from Wix for one year. Wix also includes website building tools, um, which allows you access to a website building tool for users of any experience level. And Wix Editor and Wix ADI allow you to design customizable websites from templates without any tech, uh, technical knowledge. You can also edit code directly to build custom applications and websites. Wix platform is e-commerce, uh, which allows you to sell products, accept donations, offer services and classes, sell tickets for events, and more. And you can also offer um, subscription or membership plans to your clients and collect reoccurring payments. So this might be good for collecting dues in your Ambox chapter. Um, special perks of the business and business elite plan will also include accepting multiple currencies, um, product reviews, and automated sales tax. If you're already a Wix subscriber, you can also request a TechSoup offer to purchase a discounted renewal to your current plan. And Wix also provides free online and phone support to its customers, which makes it an ideal, uh, which makes it ideal when developing a website for your Ambox chapter. All right. Next, we're going to hop into Zoom, uh, another very popular product through the pandemic. And Zoom offers video and web conferencing and webinar software so nonprofits can communicate with colleagues, volunteers, and constituents just like we are tonight. Um, Zoom meetings combine video and audio conferencing, simple online meetings, and group messaging into one platform. Zoom meetings run on mobile and desktop devices in hardware equipped conference rooms. And the TechSoup Zoom subscription has an admin fee of $57, which provides you a discount code um, to be used on Zoom's site when setting up your subscription plan. But a secondary fee to Zoom will need to be paid for setting up the subscription. Uh, the Zoom subscription will renew each year at the same rate of $57. And you can request the TechSoup offer if you already have a paid Zoom subscription, but you'll have to create a new Zoom account with a different email address, just like with the Adobe licenses, in order to receive the 50% discount through TechSoup. You can't renew an existing Zoom subscription with the TechSoup offer unless your subscription was originally obtained through TechSoup. All right, now uh, TechSoup also offers a variety of hardware options for nonprofits in the sector from top donors like Dell, Lenovo, and HP. Uh, these three offer, uh, excuse me, these three um, hardware donors offer discounted catalogs for products. Um, and when requested through TechSoup, these discounted catalogs are $0. Um, these catalogs are sent to you through an email so you can compare rates and see which of these providers offer the best hardware available to your chapter. And um, if you like any of the products in the discounted catalogs, you would order them directly from one of these three hardware donors. 
TechSoup also, uh, also offers a refurbished computer program, which allows nonprofits to request discounted desktop computers, monitors, laptops uh, from a variety of tiers of memory and RAM. And these products are built upon request and we offer a variety of computer accessories as well as keyboards, mice, lap, uh, um, mouse pads, et cetera. So we definitely encourage you to always check our website because new hardware offers are being offered all the time. Now we're gonna go ahead and jump into one of TechSoup's most popular donors, which is Microsoft. Um, all right. Uh, Microsoft offers their licenses in two tiers of products through TechSoup, donated and discounted. Donated products versions are usually the standard versions, um, whereas the discounted licenses are usually the professional or enterprise versions. On April 5th of 2022, Microsoft began a, a new two-year cycle for their licenses, allowing nonprofit organizations to request from 10 Microsoft title groups and requesting 50 licenses per title group. An example of a title group would be Microsoft Office or Windows Operating System. Um, let's see. TechSoup is also a validator for Office 365. Um, we also understand that switching to the cloud can be scary for nonprofits, but we aim to support them with any questions that they may have about switching to cloud and why migrating to the cloud may be a, a benefit to them. Our services team offers free consultations that can help you um, implement and optimize Office 365. And they'll also take you through planning and migrations for Office 365, including moving your email from your current email service and moving your data to the cloud. They can also assist you with online document sharing, collaboration and communications using Teams. My team, the customer success team at TechSoup offers technical consults as well. So if you'd like to meet with someone one-to-one -one, um, to talk a little bit about optimizing your cloud solutions or networking your systems, please contact me after the presentation and I would be happy to schedule you a technical consultation. Is the uh, Microsoft licensing for OS through Azure or are we purchasing uh, actual licenses that are gonna reside on the computers? You would actually be purchasing cloud licenses through TechSoup as your reseller, but Azure credits are coming directly from Microsoft. So those are no longer available just outright. You have to apply for Azure credit. Okay. I hope that answered your question. Yep, close enough. Okay. I think I missed the pricing on the Microsoft. It well, will all be different. So that's why I'm offering a technical okay, gotcha, presentation gotcha. if you'd like to talk about your needs specifically. I believe you can get free uh, 10 free licenses of the business basic. And then from there, you can add licenses depending on your staff size and the requirements you have per license. Um, that's kind of the nice thing about the cloud. It, it can be nice, but also confusing is that you can just pay for what you need, which means that there's like 36 different options if you just want, say, the Office Basic with just six products, or you want Office Professional Plus and, and onward and upward, depending on your business needs. So you could be paying anywhere from $3 a license to $26 a license, depending on all the bells and whistles you want your, your, your licenses to do. I hope that makes sense. Is but it a name? Do you know if it's named license? So, you know, your our leadership changes every year, ours does anyway. So if you do a named license, I'm one of those named licenses. Next year, there's a new president. Uh, can it, is it, can yeah, I see so that, that license there's, someone else? They're tenants. So it's not per person, it's per okay. domain of the organization. And this okay. is again, why I think a consultation one-to-one -one would be better right. to talk about the needs of your chapter, because depending on how many people you have, how many people you're trying to equip, it would make, you know, uh, everybody's pricing will be different. Um, okay. Then we switch into some other services that TechSoup has created to support nonprofits. Um, while we also provide software and hardware, we provide additional services to the nonprofit sector, including um, monthly IT maintenance, depending on if you need help desk services. We also have um, one-off computer and hardware support available um, when it comes to um, installation and also for Office 365. Um, we also have website services designed to help you launch or optimize your website or scale your online initiatives. 
And we also host webinars monthly on all sorts of topics that are recorded for future viewing. So if you're not able to attend, we have an entire collection of previously recorded webinars on many different topics. We also have free forums where you can access uh, the nonprofit community and ask questions and get support on all different types of topics. And we have a technology wish list forum. So if there's a product that you've been looking for that you don't yet see on our website, we recommend you put it on the technology wish list so that we can hopefully negotiate a relationship with that donor partner and get their solutions added to the online catalog, not only to support your Ambux chapter, but to also support other nonprofits in the sector. Also, as I mentioned, we're a trusted validator for Office 365, and we offer over 200 courses to boost your technology no knowledge and also expand your knowledge of Office 365 and its use cases. Um, our courses are developed in-house by our instructional team in partnership with subject matter experts, and we partner with experts that have significant experience um, in the field to ensure that our content is relevant to your technological needs. How do you handle tech support if it's uh, something that's maybe not standard? You know, Again, can, can it, there, there's an online application and you would put in you know, your need at the time and you would be contacted by the consultation team and build out a plan that fits your budget and your tech need because not everything's one size fits all. So they can't give you a base price just based on any issue. It depends on the, the issue at hand. Well, yeah, but I, I understand that, but I, well, what I was addressing was more in, in a situation where, you know, your your server is down and, and there, it's uh, something on the motherboard that, that, that needs to be addressed. Uh, do you, how, how do you do something like that? Uh, it, it, it's not something you can do remotely. This is the kind of thing where our IT help desk services would have you fill out an application to explain your need and then contact you and build a plan based around what your needs are at the time. So unfortunately, I don't actually know about how they do the help desk services. They have a team that specializes just in that. Um, but the customer success team connects you to the right people to support you um, depending on your need. And so this would be something where I would send you the application to apply for help desk services and then they would contact you directly all right because you know if it's a mission critical kind of thing where uh your email server is down or something like that it's you know having to go through an application process to get tech support seems like uh, uh it, it's not addressing mission critical situations the thing is it's going to be based upon the plan that they make for you so if you want to pay for you know, immediate support, that's the kind of thing that they would work with you on a budget um, or, or a payment plan for a service like that. Whereas many nonprofits just need a say one-time fix. And I know that a one-time fix is $55, but I don't know what a one-time fix would, would cover, unfortunately, because that's not what my team specializes in. But this is the kinds of plans that they'll connect with you on. So also if you are looking for someone locally they have another service called Consultant Connection, which allows you to hire a consultant locally that will come on site to help you with situations like that. But again, those prices are put in place by those cons consultations. And so everybody's pricing is gonna be different and they'll, ha they'll handle different types of services. Okay. Okay. Um, so another one of our internal um, services that we offer is our digital assessment tool. Um, this helps you to basically do um, different assessments um, based upon, you know, how you'd like to understand um, your capabilities in how you're connecting to the community and areas where you can improve. Um, inside the digital assessment tool is a free web-based application that helps you organize your technology needs and understand your digital capabilities and it provides customized recommendations and tools to manage the digital transformation of your chapter. So the assessments, um, there's 27 subcategories and 85 topics and they're all led by you um, on your timeline. So you don't have to do all the 27 subcategories all at once. You can do one assessment, say one month and then do another assessment the next. So it's all free and um, it just takes time. Um, so this is another service offered directly by TechSoup to support you and your technological growth. 
And then another um, new initiative that I wanted to share with Ambux chapters is our quad space. Um, quad is a new community space that we're offering for nonprofits, sort of like a take on a Facebook, um, where you can connect with your peers to share resources, solutions, and additional discounts within TechSoup um, to support your chapter. So a quad subscription is $200 a year, and it comes with a one-to-one -one assessment on your tech needs. And it also allows 10 different users within your Ambux chapter to have access to our community space, which is a dedicated community where you can join others with similar challenges, but similar missions to yours as well. And we also hold specialized events and um, have experts brought in um, each month to answer insights and questions on certain topics. We also share resources with a knowledge to, uh, on an array, uh, excuse me, on an array of resources, templates, and solutions. And there's unique member content, including resources, how-to guides, and product comparisons. And then um, there's also a personal needs assessment uh, with a one-to-one -one connection from TechSoup. And then also you get um, dedicated member support by phone, chat, and email. And a quad membership gets you discounts and um, waived admin fees on certain products on TechSoup. So for example, um, Tableau is a product that's offered on TechSoup. It's a prep builder that helps you design um, a plan and it's a two year subscription and it's $78 per year. Um, and then you can get up to five licenses through TechSoup, which would be $370, whereas your $200 quad membership would completely waive all five licenses of Tableau. So the $200 quad membership actually is the best bang for your buck, especially if you know that there's already a product on TechSoup you plan to purchase for your chapter. So quad could be a great resource for you to connect uh, with your peers, but also get discounts on popular TechSoup products. Um, so this is just another wonderful community space that TechSoup has created to support the nonprofit sector. And um, as I mentioned, we hold webinars and events each month. So we have a couple um, upcoming events that I wanted to share with you today. Um, we've got one on Cisco Meraki, which actually Unfortunately, I, I did just learn that that event was canceled uh, just today. So I apologize because this slide is now out of date. Um, but this um, was going to be an event where we shared about the Cisco Meraki discount program um, for switches and, and networking solutions. And these products are still available on TechSoup. We're just not having the event tomorrow. Um, whereas we are having an event on the, the 14th called Building a Story Brand to clarify your messaging so supporters will listen. Um, so this can be another great event to help you with digital storytelling and getting your story out to the community and getting more people to join your Ambush chapter. Um, that event says, um, join us in harnessing the transforma transformative power of storytelling. Led by renowned storytelling experts, this session promises insights into creating compelling brand stories that forge deep connections, inspire action, and drive advocacy. You can learn the art of clear messaging, audience engagement strategies, and the blueprint for a narrative that not only resonates, but also compels your audience to action. And this is a chance to redefine your organization's communication approach and secure enduring support. With that, I want to thank you all for joining me today and learning a little bit more about TechSoup and the opportunities available to your Ambux chapter when joining TechSoup. Um, as I mentioned, my team is called Customer Success, but my half of Customer Success is called Major Market Development, and we are um, we mostly support national and multi-branch organizations such as the Ambux. Um, we want to be able to provide the best support and um, resources to our clients for uh, their digital transformation and um, when they're adopting new technology. And I am the current um, customer success manager for the Ambux. So I'd love the opportunity to support you and your chapter if you're just getting started with TechSoup or if you're an existing TechSoup user. Um, if you're just getting started with TechSoup, um, Adam and I have worked together to create a DocuSign power form for Ambux chapters to easily join TechSoup by um, accessing the member hub 
and under the resources and forms section, you'll be able to find the power form there. It's gonna have five documents inside that envelope. And one of those is gonna be a form where you can specifically share the information for your Ambux chapter. And then that's gonna come directly to my team, which is mmd at techsoup.org. And from there, I'll be able to connect with you and help you set up your chapter and then talk to you about any of your individual needs or products that might interest you on the TechSoup marketplace. Um, so again, I just wanted to say thank you so much for your time today. Um, my team, um, you can see everybody here, we're all available to support you, but um, you know, I would be your, your go-to representative at TechSoup. And again, um, thank you so much, Adam, for this opportunity. It's great to connect with everybody. And um, I, I can see that there's a couple um, different things in the chat, so I'll hop in there. But again, if anybody has any questions, I welcome you to come off mute and ask your questions live, or you can drop them in the chat and I'll go ahead and address them. Okay, let's take a look. Um, okay. Dennis wrote, should all organizations' emails be title specific and do they need to be changed with every election cycle, like president instead of John Doe? Um, yes. So with TechSoup, um, if you're just getting started with TechSoup, we definitely recommend you use your first and last name. Um, people who are in positions like a treasurer or, or what have you, they can be added or removed over time, but we do want like a John Doe uh, to be registered with TechSoup first treasurer at. Um, it definitely helps us connect with you um, more directly. And so we can always make updates to your account as needed. Um, and I hope that that answers your question. Um, and I definitely encourage you in, in, in positions with your Ambux chapter um, to create a file for um, different people in your chapter to have access to the TechSoup information, just in case you do wanna add people down the line. You can have multiple people on your TechSoup account. The thing is that you can only have one organization email address on file. So anything purchased by your chapter will be sent directly to that one email address. And you know you can make the best decision when it comes to your chapter on what email address you want on file. Um, oh, I see, and Matt answered. That's really just a personal preference. Keeping a personal permanent email address per member is good. Our hub uses email addresses as usernames, so there could be a problem for more than one individual using the same email address. I agree. Um, that can cause some confusion, especially down the line if people switch out of the chapter or what have you. Um, he also says, that's not to say that there's not a benefit from having the org specific address as published forward facing contacts. Um, okay, so that basically um, addresses your email address for your Ambux chapter in the hub, uh, the membership hub, but also for TechSoup.org. Um, does anybody else have any other questions based upon some of the content that I shared tonight about getting started with TechSoup or any of the solutions available inside the marketplace? I, I do have one question. So you, sure. you in your presentation, you said that if we have an application that we would like to be assessed, is the way I understood it, that we just send you an email? <laughs> well, well just, let's go ahead and break this down a little bit more. Do, are you talking specifically about the help desk services that we were talking about where like if you want your chapter to sign up for help desk services, you would send in an application and they would speak to you about your needs as a chapter for help desk support? No, I'm so you've got um, Zoom, Microsoft, Dell, um, QuickBooks, Adobe. What about another application? if um, we would like advice or information on the other application? Sure, so um, basically the first one would be to get started with TechSoup. Okay. That's where you would go to the membership hub for Ambux and fill out the DocuSign power form so I can get your chapter set up for a TechSoup account. Okay. And then my team offers technical consultations. So if you'd like to meet with someone one-to-one -to, -one to talk about your direct needs now, I or one of my teammates would be happy to meet with you. So that, that's free. And then it was the, the either Office 365 or help desk services. Those two require a different sort of assessment application, but those are, those are separate from getting started with TechSoup and then working with my team. Okay. How do I know if we have a TechSoup account? Because our leadership has changed in the organization. 
Um, I can definitely tell you that um, Adam and I connected, and I think there's only eight Ambux chapters currently using TechSoup. Okay. So you, you know, please shoot me an email at mmd at techsoup.org. I'd be happy to check to see if your chapter already has an account. And if you don't, then I'll work with you to get you set up. And, and, okay. and a TechSoup account is free. So you can at least access all the free resources on our website, our forums, and um, our um, webinars. And um, from there, decide the best path for your chapter going forward. Thank you. Of course. Go right ahead, Renee. Um, yeah, actually, I think you might have just answered my question because I oh. did see that there were fees with some of the the um, programs that you have available. And my question was, is there a, an annual subscription fee for TechSoup in, in itself? Okay, yeah, this is a really good one to address. Um, so TechSoup itself is free. The solutions that you can see on our marketplace, they have what we call an admin fee. Some of those admin fees have to be paid directly to the donor partner. Uh, like Adobe or, or Intuit, whereas some of those admin fees are the TechSoup fee. It's usually a fifth of the retail cost, as it were, and that helps us keep our program going, uh, keeps our lights on, and keeps us negotiating with more and more donor partners. Um, so usually it'll say access to discounted rates if you're basically just getting a coupon from TechSoup to use with the donor partner directly, um, or if there, it just says admin fee, that's the TechSoup admin fee. Okay, thank you. Okay. Of course. Um, does anyone else have any questions about TechSoup or um, any of the offers in the marketplace? I was surprised to see that, there's, that Adobe still has desktop licenses. Is that going to continue anytime soon or is that expected to go cloud-based soon? I don't keep up with the news <laughs> lately these days. That's a really good question, Matt. Yeah, you're, that's a really timely question, especially when it comes to Adobe and, and QuickBooks, right? Mm -hmm. um, so Adobe will have desktop products, I believe, until December of 2024. Um, and these are the last desktop licenses being made available. Um, so basically, you know, we have them until they're out and then we're all gonna be forced to the cloud. Um, so we're Makes trying sense. to make it as easy possible for nonprofits and let you know, uh, be as informed as possible before the switch is made permanently um, so that you can make the best choices for you. But it, especially when it comes to QuickBooks right now, a lot of nonprofits are scrambling because the desktop product is basically going away. And this is by Intuit, not TechSoup. And we just have to enforce that for nonprofits. So support to that desktop product is going to end in May of 2024. And so it will stop updating. And so nonprofits are gonna be forced to switch to online. And not all of them are happy about this, but we wanna to try to make this switch as seamless as possible. Thanks. For sure. Any other questions about solutions on TechSoup or some of the available resources on our website? Well, I guess I just have a question for the group, really. Uh, what technology needs are you thinking, you know, if our chapter had this as a solution, gosh, that would really just be a game changer. Are we thinking databases, forms, um, Accounting software. Can any of you think of any needs that I, you have? I do. I have one, and it is really so. It looked like the Wix has a billing solution, but does does that billing solution stand alone? Because we don't have the people in our organization to maintain a website or you know develop a, a web presence. But we do have the need for billing, kind of like the Zephi app. And that's what I was uh, going to ask about. So we really just need something to uh, do the billing for us and uh, accept money and because Venmo doesn't work well. And, and Zephi is supposed to be free. So that was my question. That is a great question. I'm looking into that for you right now. So... Adam, do you want to speak to Zephi? Sure, I can speak to Zephi. Um, do you know, are you talking about uh, membership fees, like billing for like your, Mem your, own, Member your own members? Yeah, membership fees. And if we also do some type of a campaign uh, that people can use to pay through mm -hmm. rather than, because right now we, uh, 
like if I send a request out or I get at the Venmo, then I have to pay the inbox and that doesn't work well. Yep. So I need, and Zephy is supposed to be free uh, by uh, funded by donations. It is. Yeah, it's it, we've actually adopted it to the on on the national site currently, and I think uh, with with uh, with good success, um, Zephy is free to use. Um, you can do donations, you can do raffles, you can do memberships on there. Um, very easy to set up simply with your your your, your EIN number, um, connect your bank. And you can begin building forms on that on that platform. Hey, Adam, I'll add, um, Jaina, I did that to our chapter recently because I wanted to get rid of all the PayPal fees. And we went to Zephy. It's really easy to use. It is free. And you get 100% of anything that they pay. I set up a membership page um, where they can pay their dues through that way. And then I did a donation page. So I can share some information about that, show you what I did later on. Okay, thank you. The <laughs> other one is um, QuickBooks to me is very difficult to use. We tried to use it for a little while. Is there another more simple solution for maintaining MBUC records? Because we don't pay that many bills. So that was my other question. Um. Through TechSoup, that would be a no, but okay. I don't know if Adam has any alternatives to QuickBooks. I believe QuickBooks is a nightmare. It's just a I, major overkill for Ambooks. I use QuickBooks, but I use QuickBooks. I'm treasurer of other organizations and I'm the treasurer of our church. And I use QuickBooks. I'll tell you, going from the desktop to the online was a nightmare for me because it's totally different. But I think if you got somebody to help you set up um, your QuickBooks, you could learn it pretty easily. It's not it's not too difficult. Um, Carmela is the accountant on here. She might tell you if there's anything better, but I I I think it's probably one of the best. I like Carmela, Gina. Wanna... We we use a lot of um, for ease. A lot of times we use Quicken. And Quicken is basically um, a lot easier to to use. Um, so I look at if, if a client doesn't need the all the bells and whistles of QuickBooks, maybe you just use a simple program like Quicken. Okay, yeah, thank you. I talk to your bank as well because sometimes the banks will have uh, access to uh, software that you can use that uh, coordinates directly with your bank account. If you go with a lot of those simpler solutions, though, you lose your ability to do accounts receivables. So that's one thing you'll have to do manually if you go with a lot of those other solutions. I, I saw Dennis opt in with the chat, but I can't access the chat right now. Something about Quicken. Quicken Plus. Mm -hmm. You're muted, Dennis. I use Quicken Plus for a homeowners association. So your homeowners are basically your customers. Uh, we have inventory items called 2023 dues, uh, 2023 penalties. It has nice accounts receivable. It has tags. So each uh, house can be a, a tag so we can keep track of. Uh, so you want to see what did I build for the last 10 years in this house? You just run a report for uh, 627 Main Street, and there's all your reports. Um, one of the things with any software that you use is who do you call when you need help. So uh, QuickBooks obviously is a very heavy uh, usage within the CPA bookkeeper industry. Uh, Quicken is a little bit heavier for personal use and investments, but it's much cheaper and a little bit simpler. Um, there's a few landmines in both of them, but uh, if I was to set up a set of books for an organization where you're just billing you know, 30 or 50 people a year for dues and then keeping track of two or three fundraising events, I'd probably use Quicken. Uh, it's it's pretty simple. And again, your neighborhood CPA, uh, next door accounting type person probably understand that package. And it's all cloud-based now as well. Everybody's going to software as a service. So okay. eventually you're, you're everything is gonna be online, yeah. yeah there, there's no opt they, they basically it's kill the, the, the vet top of the year. Great presentation, as we have. Right. Thank yeah, thanks, Ashley. 
My pleasure. Thank you so much, all of you, for your time tonight. Again, I'm available if you have any questions about any other solutions. I'm sorry that Quicken isn't available on TechSoup, but obviously QuickBooks is. Um, but you know, a, a lot of membership organizations that I support through TechSoup prefer QuickBooks Online just because they have to basically have a paper trail to the national organization. And so it's been easier for them to all connect on data. Um, but you know, I, I definitely encourage you to do what saves you the most amount of money and makes the most sense for your chapters. Um, Adam, thank you so much for the opportunity to connect with everyone tonight. And um, please feel free to reach out if you'd like to get started with TechSoup at any time. Thank Ashley, thank you, is, your Ashley. Contact, is your contact information going to be on the hub too? Uh, yeah, Adam, would you would you I provide that for everyone? Mm -hmm. I can add it. Okay. Perfect. And I'm just going to drop my email here in the chat if anyone wants to send me something directly. Thank you so much, Ashley. Thank you. Thanks and Adam, so thanks for setting us all up and controlling it for me while I'm traveling. <laughs> Not a problem. Travel safe. All right. Thank all right. you, everyone, and happy holidays. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Happy holidays to all of you. Yes. Yeah. Bye-bye. There are some other uh, resources that are uh, frequently available. Um, if you don't need anything quite as extensive as, as what was presented tonight, um, we're fortunate uh, in, in uh, Bloomington that we've got uh, two major insurance companies um, and uh, the resulting uh, support from uh, people like Microsoft and HP and things like that, that uh, you can talk to them directly and, and, and frequently they can uh, have uh, opportunities for both hardware and software uh, purchases for nonprofits. Uh, they'll frequently have people are available uh, <clears throat> uh, for support services, uh, particularly from a software standpoint. Uh, we've also got a couple of universities here um, that do similar types of things. So there are, are a lot of opportunities um, that might be a little bit more cost effective if you don't have uh, extensive needs. You know, I think I look more, I, I also look very specifically on what takes us less time to do the job because I, I feel like our leadership team can be overtaxed by simple bookkeeping so anything that saves time and when i got uh, the quickbooks online and expected our treasurer to um maintain that application and i'm a techie person yeah it was just too much so thank you for that additional information jay not a problem